You want to know what I love? When you guys in my audience, specifically in my Discord, you beautiful vital idols, post something that I hadn't seen, that I might find just inherently interesting to what it is that I like to cover, that would have completely missed my radar otherwise, and you did just that today. Welcome back to Words of Paradise, I'm your host, Leon Idol, and uh, yes, this video popped up in my Discord, and uh, I've never seen it. I, I, I have no idea what it is, it's just called, It's Time, The Video Game Industry Needs You, and um, a lot of people were fawning over it. I haven't seen it, I know nothing about it beyond the title, so I thought, let's go ahead and react to it, see what this guy has to say. I have reacted to one other video of his, like, a couple months ago on a live stream, and uh, it was an interesting video, I liked it, but I haven't really followed up on anything he's done since, so, you know, let's go ahead and take a look. Thank you for joining me. I am Jarrell Dulay. Today, the topic we are discussing is of the utmost importance. In the video games industry, we have seen a decade of decay and rot in the AAA section. So far, no lies detected. I mean, that's what so many of us, Hypnotic, myself, Atreus, Dread Roberts, make a large portion of our content on. Uh, frankly, there, there's so much more news, but the video game stuff is so pressing because it is the largest entertainment industry in the world that when you see the complete rotten degradation of that industry, it's so much easier to notice it in other industries as well. Film, books, comics, but also literally just general audience uh, stuff like, you know, cars or, or what's going on with Boeing. You'll see it in politics. It's a lot easier to notice when you're familiar with the fine details of it in literally the biggest entertainment industry in the world. Let's continue. Publishers and developers have increasingly bullied and kicked out people of actual talent and skill, replacing them with new employees hired not for their ability to create anything meaningful and not for their intent to create good games for players. Nope, hiring them entirely because of their skin color or sexual proclivities or who they know or because they have ideologies that fit their worldview. And that's that's why we say DEI hires, which is being you know, said, oh, that's a slur, but um, you guys have DEI policies. You're hiring based on these DEI policies. So it's very strange that you would consider DEI hire a slur when that's quite literally what they are because of your own implemented rules. But okay, go off. No. Publishers and developers are now hiring based on filling diversity checkboxes granting vital workplace roles based on gender, diversity, and idiot logical views. The industry employs... Did homie, did, did homie just say idiot logical instead of ideological? I think I see why the folks on my Discord kind of like this video. ...who spread not the wisdom and passion of creating games, but the hatred and insecurity of labeling people by their physical and personal traits, and harassing people based on their gender, skin color, and beliefs. The result of these industry malpractices and self-destructive management is this. Ever-inflating budgets ballooning into hundreds of millions of dollars. Which is issue number one. If you watched my Halo video earlier, you would know I said the same thing then. As much as I want to get the woke mind virus out of gaming, if we don't fix the budgets, if we don't fix the, the, the bloat in the gaming sector, then getting rid of the ideology won't change anything in terms of the quality of the games. They'll still be bad. They'll just be bad from a different angle. So well said. And exceptionally long development times, sometimes reaching 8 to 10 years. More and more people making games today are not making games for you. They are manufacturing effigies for and of themselves to serve their own egos. The AAA space in the games industry is now paying the price for allowing these radicalized extremists to take control of so many publishers and development studios. I stand here before you today because it is time. For too long, the games industry has lacked leadership and direction. For too long, we have tolerated and allowed neo-feminist, radicalized extremists to enter our workspaces as they tear down men, as well as women who refuse to conform to radicalized ideas, as they sow seeds of hatred into the next generation of young people. Bro. Tell me where homie is lying. This is, uh, again, this is not some anti-woke dog whistle or whatnot. He is just speaking objectively about what is happening in the back-end processes of the hiring of individuals in gaming culture. And you can extrapolate this beyond gaming culture. This is happening quite literally in every facet of the corporate world. I had Max Mura, Chinky Eye Joe, on my live stream this past week, who is, um... 
pretty big up in the corporate world in Japan, and he had some fascinating insight on this. And, uh, look, if I know anything about what race is smarter than the other, you know, Asians are pretty up there, and he made a lot of pretty convincing and compelling arguments. For too long, our industry has lacked leaders who are willing to stand up and say no. Every industry needs strong leaders. A strong leader must be able to see the future. A you know, he's saying this, and uh, we, can, we can give an anecdotal example. I'm tired of talking about Concord. It's ran its course. However, this was actually acknowledged by the people at uh, Firewalk Studios. Was uh, They didn't have anyone to say no. Everyone's idea was a good idea. And when everyone's idea is a good idea, no idea is a good idea. And the game was canceled after only being out for 10 days. After $400 million went into it and 8 years of production. So, maybe homie's on to something. Strong leader must have his or her own vision of the future, and a strong leader must have the power to bring their vision into reality. We have failed this generation of not just the video games industry, but media in totality. We must open our eyes and accept we were wrong to let ideology and narcissism replace competence and artistic intent. Okay, I'm going to push back on that a little bit. We weren't wrong to do so. We just, a lot of folks didn't know that's what was happening. Now, a lot of us back in the OG Gamergate days, we, we were very well aware of this, and we've been pushing back on it since around 2012, 2014, things to that effect. Uh, you know, Gamergate being in 2014. But you could see the seeds being planted as far back as 2012. And we've been pushing back on it then, but it sounded so fringe and conspiratorial, a lot of folks didn't believe it. And so... I wouldn't say they were wrong, I would just say they were ignorant to it. Nobody thought, hey, let's go ahead and put LGBTQIA, LMNOPQS plus ideology in video games, and that will improve the product. No, it was more, oh, well, people want to have some more diversity. I don't see why that would be really a problem. I mean, you know, we want everyone to be included because we just want more people playing games. It was a sort of a, 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 a lackadaisical ideology that allowed theirs to fester and overcome. But, uh, yeah, no one thought it was real. Uh, well, this is the right thing to do. It was just a passive thought, if it was given thought at all. By accepting we were wrong, we can learn from our mistakes. We can be better. I would say by accepting we screwed up, not necessarily that we were wrong. They're two different things. We made the mistakes, but not because we, you know, thought, uh, not because we thought something would be good, but because we weren't even aware of the harms, good or bad. Allow me to share with you my vision for the future of the games industry. Let's hear it, homie. Where we are headed is an increasing collapse of AAA publishers and developers. Want to see it? These companies will elevate their extremist hiring practices of excluding men, only hiring Please, certain women and special pronouns. Their level of ability does not matter. Whether or not they are good people or individuals who possess maturity and psychological stability does not matter. Because of this, AAA studios will continue to fall. This will eventuate. There is no stopping it. So we must be prepared to shape the future. In place of AAA studios, more, smaller studios will gain prominence. Smaller teams built of individuals who were born with talent, who have spent their lives sharpening their skills, who have the passion and vision necessary to create good games, they will gain increasing levels of success. Independent developers, despite lacking funding, will have access to more knowledge and stronger tools. Independent developers will craft incredible games fueled entirely by passion and the sheer force of willpower. I think that mostly this is true. However, it's not just corporations that hold these ideologies. These are individuals. Go on Steam and, and look at all these indie games. You'll find a lot of woke indie games. And, and that's because there are people that hold these beliefs. I mean, look, about 50% of the country is probably going to vote for Kamala Harris, unfucking fortunately. So that means about 50% of the com uh, of the country are insane woke ideolo ideologues. And that's not accounting for the rest of the world, you know, Europe, uh, parts of South America, things to that effect. So, now, granted, the free hand of the market will decide. So we have these indie devs, the woke ones making games and they don't sell. Okay, fair enough. But I just don't know that I agree with the blanket statement that if we go to this uh, independent model, that it's all going to be hunky-dory apple pie. To create something good for their fellow gamers. Leading the charge will be medium-sized development teams who are able to fight back 
and withstand the ideological meddling of blue-haired activists who seek not to make the world better, but to take power and control for themselves. These medium-sized developers of the future will create the grand-scale experiences that the AAA studios of the past once provided. With lower budgets and shorter project timelines, medium-sized studios will do what hundreds of millions of dollars and thousands of incompetent activists cannot do. We've been seeing this lately, by the way. I mean, look, Helldivers 2, at the end of the day, was a double-A game. It is one of the most well-received games of all year. Sega has been focusing on doing the double-A thing for Sonic for the last you know, several years. I mean, Sonic Frontiers, the most celebrated Sonic game in probably a decade or more, it's technically a double-A game, you know, when it comes to budget, when it comes to the number of people that worked on it. The upcoming Sonic Cross Shadows Generation game, also double-A, and I think that's been the best thing for Sonic. Again, I'm speaking anecdotally about a franchise that I'm a big fan of, but again, you can use the Helldivers 2 example. Maybe you can even say something along the lines of Black Myth Wukong and um, uh, Stellar Blade are in that double-A sphere, because they are using the practices he is talking about. Now, they might have triple-A graphics, uh, but that's not the only thing that defines triple-A make good games for you. 10 years from now, the games industry will be a very different landscape. We will see a renaissance era where creativity will bring passion and fun back to the forefront. Wild and experimental game concepts will spark the imaginations of people all around the world. These new games will be tightly woven together by threads of brilliant storytelling and the what he's describing uh, is what we had back in the PS2 era. I mean, you asked me, yo, Leon, what are some of the most memorable games? You know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say Resident Evil 4. I'm going to say Devil May Cry 3. I'm going to say Jack and Daxter. I'm going to say Spyro 2. I'm going to say Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, which granted those are actually PS1 era. But the point is, my, the games that jumped to my noggin are from, like, 98 to, like, 2008. You know, there's this 10-year period. And don't get me wrong, there were good games after that. I loved Devil May Cry 5. Uh, I, I recently was playing, um, oh, it, it was an indie game, but, uh, oh, indie RPG, I'm blinging on the name right now, but the point is, there are still modern games I play, but if you're, when I asked about video games, my mind goes back to the past, and I'm talking about the past past, not the recent past. Yeah, Fallout 4 was great, and if you specifically say, like, yo, Leon, in the last 10 years, it was one of the best games you could think of, well, frankly, I probably shouldn't even bring up Fallout 4, considering uh, the game wasn't exactly great at launch, but the point is, I'm more inclined to bring up Fallout 3 than I am 4, as a, when one was in 2008, and one was in, you know, like, 2000, what was it, 15? The games industry will become a tapestry of creativity and excitement. Ten years from now, we will take the video games industry to new heights that we never thought could be possible. To get there, the games industry needs you. If you are young, if you are interested in getting into game development, we need you. We need you to figure out what you are great at doing. We need you to work hard, to gain knowledge and experience, to sharpen your skills to a razor's edge, and when you find the limitation of your abilities, find a way to push through those limits and rise to new heights. Homie has given us the shonen anime main character speech for business, and you love to see it. Also, I completely agree with him. Any asshole can do what I do, which is turn on a camera, talk into a mic, and start having an opinion. I'm not really adding a whole lot, aside from hopefully bringing awareness to those that don't know about the culture war. Because the way I look at it, every video I do could be somebody's first foray into this. I don't want to take for granted that I've been invested in this for a decade. You'll never know when the next, you know, turning point will come from. We've seen Anna Kasparian, who is a lifelong hardcore lefty, slowly start to shift her opinions to where some align more with the right now. And let's be real, her opinions that do that are very common sense ones, but it took her a long time to get there. I have the same mentality when making videos. Maybe this is someone's first foray into this, and maybe they don't care about gaming, but maybe something sparks an idea. And, uh, yeah, point is... Anyone, can, maybe not even anyone can do that. Maybe that is what I'm good at, is just trying to make these, uh, you know, well thought out, articulated arguments that hopefully have a little bit of a com comedic edge to them. Um, but that's only going to go so far. We need actual boots on the ground, hands on individuals that can make something. I don't have that sort of creativity. So, uh, look, I'm out on that one. But if someone else can, if you're watching this, can, 
then do it. And I, I will absolutely shout you from the rooftops and support you in any way, shape, or form that I can, like so many others in this space will that do want to see not just gaming, but culture healed, whether it be nerd culture or, or the political culture or restaurant food. I don't know. It's all terrible for you making us fat nowadays. So, like, whatever it is, that's it's, it's a good, admirable, noble goal. Start learning today. Be careful to avoid wasting your skill points on things that don't add value to your life. Invest your skill points on things that matter, that help you become the best version of yourselves. This will be a difficult path to travel. You will meet people who will set out to tear you down because of your gender, because of your skin color, because of your personal beliefs. I know this is a lot to ask of you, but I ask you to fight. Stand for what you believe in. If this is something you care about, no matter how much they bully and harass you, no matter how much negativity is thrown at you, fight. Stay level-headed, focus on your goals, and don't let evil drag you down. Get into game development courses and find a way to enter work in the games industry. We need you to work hard and push your abilities to their limits because in 10 years, you will be leading the games industry. Whether you are able to work in a medium or large company, whether you work in a small team, or whether you work solo, the video game industry needs you. To those experienced artists, writers, and developers out there who have lost your positions, who have had your roles stolen by these radicalized activists, we need you. Find each other. Find a way to form small or medium-sized teams. Find a way to create games that you care about for other people. Even if you have to work solo to create some projects, the video games industry still needs you. Pass your knowledge and experience to the next generation. Wasn't No Man's Sky, and you can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, made by a team of like 12 people or something? And don't get me wrong, No Man's Sky was rough on launch. I, I know because I was one of those that had been following the project for years and was a day one -er, and I returned it the next day. I was so distraught over the situation. But you know what? When you look back on it, for a game made by 12 people... Yeah, it was really overhyped, but it was still a good functional game that actually, at least my version, wasn't broken on day one. It was just severely lacking content. And then those same 12 people have been working on the game all these years since, and it's now gone down in history as one of the most celebrated fixed games of all time. Again, 12, maybe, maybe they expanded, maybe they had 20, you know, you know 12, 20 more, who, who knows, I don't know. Point is, it's not no three to 400 people like what Ubisoft is having work on Assassin's Creed Shadows, so, uh... Homie is entirely correct again. Continue to hone your abilities and reach even greater heights. We need good games. For many years to come still, you are needed. To my fellow gamers out there all around the world, find and support the developers you trust and respect. We will have to be discerning from now on. We must take a close look at the developers of our games and ask the question, did those developers make a game for you? Or did they make a game for themselves? Homie had a brilliant opportunity to say, did they make a game for you? Or did they make an opportunity for, uh, did they make a game for they, them? I fucked up the joke just now, but whatever. Uh, point is, probably better to go over the, 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 the responsible, of, uh, oh, you know, a game for themselves. But just saying a game for they, them would have been pretty good right there. You have the power to enact real change in the world. And you have the power to raise up smaller, genuine developers who are making games for you. To the content creators who are shining a light on the corruption and malpractices Hi. of the gaming industry, we need you. Oh, well, Continue you. to let the voices of your fellow gamers be heard. Stand for what you believe in. Champion the art, stories, and games that you care about. Help smaller developers reach the audience they need to succeed. We cannot do this without you. The vid you can count on me, bro. Video game industry needs you. To all you activists out there who are tearing apart... Get fucked. ...art game development studios who are setting out to destroy the lives of other people, there is nothing I can say to you that you would have the intellectual capacity to understand. Homie will say that but won't say make a game for they, them. Come on now, bro. Please continue as you are doing. Please continue to destroy the AAA games industry because we do not need you. Let it burn, You will not baby. be part of the future of the games industry. The rest of us don't even need to do anything to stop you. 
you will stop yourself with your incompetence and thirst for power and control. Please continue to squander hundreds of millions of dollars and kindly continue to fail your investors and stakeholders. For those of you who do want to have a positive effect on the world, your gender does not matter. Your sexuality is unimportant. Your skin color does not determine whether you are a good or bad person. Do not let anyone tell you otherwise. Work hard, believe in yourself, become excellent. To all the genuine developers out there, you artists and writers, you programmers and testers, you project managers and engineers, it is time. The video game industry needs you. To you young people who dream of one day bringing your stories and worlds to life, it is time. The video game industry needs you. When you need support, I will be there. When you need someone to lead, I will be there. And when you need someone to fight for you, I will be there. A strong leader is able to see the future. I see the future of the... Well, damn it. I do not have the clairvoyance to be a strong leader. Though I wish I did. Games industry is brighter and more brilliant than anything we've ever seen. And at the center of it is you. Gamers first. Thank you. Well, that was a pretty good video. I won't lie, I quite enjoyed that. Again, I've reacted to one of his videos before, and his delivery was, um, his delivery is very corporate, but, uh, that, that normally would be a bad thing. You don't really want a, a corporate delivery. You want somebody who's, like, passionate and, and, and exu But I think because of the way he does his videos, the passion comes through just in his, his dire, direct response to take this very seriously, and that is a form of passion in and of itself. It's not always jumping up and down and yelling and, and, and trying to be funny like um, somebody might be watching right now, uh, but the fact of the matter is, he's not wrong. He's not just wrong about the video game side of things, but all facets of culture. I, I, I can't stress this enough. Indie comic book creators uh, you know, are in this same boat. People who are trying to make alternatives to tabletop games on GoFundMe. Or people that are in the car industry. I mean, let's not pretend that Tesla is not a completely different beast than you know, Toyota or, or Chevy or whatnot. And yeah, by all means, you don't have to like Elon Musk or Tesla. But the point is, the company is being handled a very different way. NASA, a government organization, handled a very different way than SpaceX. I mean, this sort of, uh, this facet of, of culture and really the corporate structure is in dire need of a shakeup because this isn't just affecting video games. So this is really a message that anybody with any sort of creative and or entrepreneurial drive should really drive uh, jive with. But those are just my opinions. Let me know yours in the comments down below. Or let me know on X where you can find me at Bolt the Word. And please just subscribe. I'm a nerdy news channel. I cover nerdy news every day. Now again, not always about the video game industry. That's what it's been a lot of lately. But uh, anime, movies, music, Magic the Gathering, you name it. Check me out on Instagram at Words of Paradise underscore Leon. And become a member for $4.99 a month. You can join the Discord. Choose the articles I go over on a day-to-day -day basis. Choose the videos I react to on my Friday night live streams. And of course, get involved with over 130 vital idols. We are a bright, beautiful, glowing, vibrant community that I cannot wait to grow even further because we do care about diversity, but only one kind of diversity, diversity of thought. If that's interesting to you, join the Discord, hit subscribe, and until next time, it is all here in the Nerdosphere. This has been Words of Paradise.